Hey guys, what's going on? Joshua Zitting with SixFigureEcomAcademy.com. I wanted to go over with you guys, um, obviously we have a massive training that talks about everything included in Facebook, but recently there's been a lot of changes inside of Facebook, as you guys may have noticed when you're inside of the actual ads platform itself. A lot of things have been updated in the last six months. Um, so there's some things that have been moved around. Not much has changed, you guys, but ultimately the one thing, the one big update that uh, Facebook is changing or have changed is really the, the use of Power Editor and how I think that uh, the Power Editor is actually a great way to set up your ads, but a lot, of, um, a lot of people don't fully understand it or it can confuse them. So the thing is, the main difference between Power Editor, you guys, and your Ads Manager is... When you set up an ad inside of Ads Manager, it kind of walks you through all three steps of setting up a campaign, setting up your ad sets, and then basically setting up your ad all at one time. Now, inside of Power Editor, you do have a little bit more flexibility um, in setting everything up, and if you understand it, um, it can be a really powerful tool. So I wanted to kind of walk through each and every individual little step inside of the Power Editor um, because initially you get into it and it can look kind of confusing, but the truth is it's really not confusing. Um, it's just that everything's kind of pieced out. So when you're inside of the, the power editor, you guys, and you can find the power editor from your drop down right here. Um, if you go to all tools, power editors right here, or typically it's, it's right on the left hand side here as well. So you can access the ad manager. Um, you can access the power editor and inside of all tools, as you guys know, there's a lot of other things that are very useful. Um, audience insights. You've got uh, your pixels. If you need to find your pixels here, you can set up custom audiences to where if you're using um, specific audiences pretty regularly, you can go ahead and customize those as well um, to where you don't have to continue to set up audiences if, if your targeting is pretty much the same for most of your products. So inside of the power editor, you guys coming back to this, um, you've got your main account overview, and I'm just inside a test account, you guys, so um, I just wanted to kind of break this down for you. You've got campaigns, you've got ad sets, and you've got ads, okay? So this is where most people get confused. Um, a campaign, you guys, let's say that you have a product that is um, a woman's dress, okay? So let's, let's say a women's dress is, is your main uh, campaign. And let's say that it is specific to, um, I like uh, like the term steampunk or like maybe it's like a gothic style dress. So maybe your maybe your niche is goth, right? And so inside of the campaign, right here you can actually um, you can create your campaign right here. So if you were to set up a brand new campaign, you would come to the campaigns tab and you would create a campaign. Okay, so initially. If you were to set up a campaign inside of uh, Power Editor, just give it a sec because it's going to take a second to update. But you could uh, you could name this Women's Gothic. Uh, let's say it's short short skirt black dress. And again, you can always put like uh, women twenty four to fifty six. Um, if you're targeting U.S., you can put that in there. If it's Canada, you could put that in there. This is basically just naming your campaign, you guys, so it's easy to find over here when you're actually looking through your campaigns. So you do have options right here for uh, buying type. And then, obviously, uh, your campaign objective. Okay, so when you're inside of the ads manager, this is the first thing that pops up. Um, and again... In e-commerce, you guys, our goal is sales, so conversions, right? Now, if you're if you're playing with video ads and stuff like that, I still test conversions. Um, some people test video views because they look at it like it's still a way to get sales by getting views. But ultimately, our ultimate goal, you guys, in e-commerce is conversions, right? Sales. So that would be your campaign objective. Um, now. You can basically name your ad set and name your ad right here as well, but I'm just going to show you guys how to do that individually so you guys understand. Um, this just gives you the option basically to set a, a brand new ad set and set 
and create a new ad. Now, just to explain this to you guys so it makes sense, right? I just created this brand new, basically campaign, okay? A campaign is, we've got this dress, okay? It's a gothic dress, black dress. That is our campaign. That is what we're actually, our ad is out there that we're going to advertise is this black dress. Now, ad sets, okay, are going to be this information right here, okay? If you have an ad set that you want specifically to the United States, that becomes an ad set inside of your campaign. So your campaign is hosting whatever that one product is, essentially, that you want to advertise. Now, an ad set is where you break down where you want multiple different ads to go for that one specific product, okay? So if you wanted to test an ad, an ad set to women 24 to 30, then you could create another ad set for, say, 31 to 35. You could create another ad set for women 36 to 40, okay? So you have a campaign that is your main campaign, but then you start breaking down what you want inside of that ad campaign, okay? That's what an ad set is. So it's very, um, it's, it's actually really easy to understand. If you, if you take a look, like campaign, see how it's got a folder? So essentially your ad set, see how it's got multiple things? So if you've got multiple ads running, but you're hosting them in one area, your campaign, like a folder, um, hopefully that makes sense to you guys. And then your ads over here are essentially the ads, the, the image, the copy, all that stuff that you set up essentially to run your ad. Okay, so if I was to create an ad set under this particular ad, so for instance, again, if you wanted to set um, up a separate type of ad, so see how it still is still up here? So actually, you could remove the women's 2456 Canada um, because ultimately, this is just gothic black dress, okay? So essentially, you would just want the title of your campaign here. Now your ad set would be, this is women, let's say, 24 to 30, okay? So that becomes an ad set. Okay, and then you can create your content inside of the ad. So again, this is where normally in the ads manager, this looks very familiar to you guys, okay? So you, you select your conversion event, which would be purchase, okay? So again, if you have a brand new pixel with no purchases on it, this is gonna be red, okay? That's okay, doesn't matter. Um, once you start getting purchases on that pixel, this is gonna turn green. So don't let that throw you off. Um, just go ahead and select purchase. And then as you come down, there's going to be a lot of new stuff um, inside of the ads manager. Now for e-commerce, again, you guys, a lot of this stuff you don't have to worry about. You can play around with it, but most of it you really don't have to mess with. So I skip past uh, dynamic creative and offer. Now if you were to click, you know, this kind of stuff, you can pick what page obviously you want the offer to go to. Um, but we're gonna do that actually when we set up the advertisement anyway, so you don't have to mess with that too much. Dynamic creative, um, again, automatically find the most effective combinations of creative assets for your audience. We're gonna customize this ourselves, so I, I don't really ever mess with that. Now, you do still have your daily budget or lifetime budget, so again, we're running ads on a daily budget. Now, if you had a specific amount of money that you wanted to run uh, for an ad and have it shut off, which again, if you find an ad that's converting, I don't know why you'd ever want it to shut off, but daily budget is essentially what, what we choose for this. So you get to set your daily budget. Now again, there's two ways that you can utilize your ad spend, okay? I talk a lot about when you're brand new, if you want to start with a $5 ad, that's great. Okay, that $5 ad you need to at least run for three or four days to collect enough data to make a decision whether or not that ad is going to convert for you. Okay, now a lot of things come into play when you're looking at data, you know, your click-through rate, um, your relevant score, uh, which, which relevant score 
won't even show up you guys until you have enough data okay until you've got like a thousand plus impressions um, it's it's not even going to show you the relevance score so now what I like to do as I've gotten more um, as my stores have started doing better and obviously I've got a lot more money to play with when it comes to putting into ads I will actually start an ad at 20 to 25 dollars a day now why would I do that okay um, because when I'm testing ads, you guys, a lot of times um, I'm using programs like Adspresso to basically test, say, 50, 50 ads at one time for one product, okay? And yeah, I start, I start most of them out at $20 a day. So 50 ads at $20 a day. Now, some of you are going, whoa, like that's a lot of money. However, here's the thing. Half of those ads end up converting, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm forcing the data up front. Right, rather than waiting four days to collect the data because four times five is 20, correct? Okay, so I, I would start an ad at say $20 a day, and after a day, I should be able to look at the data of all these ads and shut off the ones that aren't converting and then scale up the ones that are. So, typically, over a three to four day period, I can take 50 to 100 ads and narrow them down to like the top 20. And those top 20 end up making any money that I've lost on the front end in the back end because the main goal, you guys, is collecting that data and understanding the data for who is actually out there looking at this product and clicking on it and purchasing it for your store, okay? So essentially, that's where your ad spend and your data comes into play. It's really important to, to utilize your ad spend to understand who your buyer is for this specific product. Um, obviously when we talk in, in the course about different things that convert, um, and why they convert and how, and the, the different things that could stop your actual storefront from converting, you guys, this is, this is where it comes into play of how important the setup of your product pages are and your website and everything. Um, so you actually know what's working for your store, right? But essentially that's a whole, whole other video topic that we're not going to touch on today, but Ultimately, you set your daily budget. Um, ad scheduling. You can run ads on a schedule like if you did want um, you know, your ads to only show during specific times. Um, typically, Facebook's going to kind of optimize a lot of this for you already, so I don't mess with it. Um, and then when you get down to audiences, you guys, this is where if you are playing around um, with your actual audiences in here, you can actually set these up to where if you know kind of who your audience already is, like I said, and you know and you know what's converting for your store already, you can just create custom audiences. This is also where you would pull in if you've created lookalike audiences, retargeting aud audiences, they're all gonna be in here. So essentially, if, you're, if your store's brand new, you're not gonna mess with custom audiences. You're gonna set up basically a brand new audience, okay? In locations, this is where you get to Basically, pick and choose where you want your ad to show, okay? So, like, if you wanted your ad to show to United States and Canada, um, you can just add Canada in here, right? And now you're going to see over here on the right-hand side the potential reach for anyone um, in those two areas, okay? Now, again, I highly suggest split testing these. You know, do one ad for the United States, do one ad for Canada. That way, um, you can really pick apart your data and know you know, where your main audience that's converting is coming from. Um, or, you know, you end up with two really good successful ads, one for United States, one for Canada, and you can start to pick those apart and scale those up. Um, I just, I like the separateness. You don't have to do it separately, but I just think for actually reading data and looking at uh, what's working, it's, it's a lot better if you split test locations, okay? So the other thing is your age group, right? Again, Living inside of your audience, understanding who it is that you're, who your target audience is. Initially, you may not know that. So initially for a woman's dress that's, that's, that's gothic, you know, you might want to test those, uh, the actual age ranges. So, but if this particular ad set, again, if we're, if we're testing 24 to 30, this is where we set that up. So 24 to age 30. And that's essentially going to tell you over here, also on the right-hand side, you see how this number is getting lower? Okay, we're down to 45,000 people. Now when you come down to detailed targeting, 
um, you can start to search for things like Gothic. Okay, so you can Gothic fashion. Okay, 3,833,000 people. <clears throat> you know, and maybe you start there, right? So now your audience, your potential reach is 5 million. Oh, forgot to up here. Make sure you select the gender. Now again, if you have a, if you have a unisex product that you're promoting, I highly suggest doing an ad for men and an ad for women. Um, I mean, research does show that women are much more likely to be purchasing on social media. So I've always suggested to students, like, especially if you're brand new, focus into women markets. Um, however, men, male markets done correctly can be very, um, very lucrative because most people in e-commerce aren't out there actually doing companies for men. So uh, I, I have had success uh, in the male market. However, it is, it is a little bit more trickier. You do have to understand the market better and you really, it does take a little bit more time because men don't typically make uh, as like quick, quick decisions when it comes to impulse buys. Okay. So just, just know that going into it. So if the other thing is understanding, you know, excluding or narrowing your audience. So <clears throat> you can exclude audiences from your targeting, like if there's something specific, uh, maybe a specific brand that you don't uh, that you that you don't identify with, or you don't think your audience would identify with, you can exclude, um, and then narrow, right? So narrowing just means that ultimately, in detailed targeting, let's say that you're going after gothic fashion, but you also want to make sure that these people like, and you can even use the suggestion tool. Um, let's see. Gothic architecture. Let's see, women's goth. Okay, women's fashion and apparel buyers. Okay, that's a huge market. So maybe gothic fashion and women's fashion and apparel buyers. The other thing that you can always add in, you guys, is um, is uh, engaged shoppers. Okay. So engaged shoppers is huge because it pulls in people that have already been buying on social media. So that's a, that's a quick little tool that you can definitely use um, to actually connect with people that are engaged. Now, that's a great size audience right there, 1,700,000. It's not too small to where your ad's going to die out quickly, you guys. And it's not too big to where Facebook's uh, data and pixel over time can't get smart enough to find who your buyers actually are. So that's a great... Um, that's a great size audience. So I would typically just test this right now with, with this audience. And the great thing is once you have this created, you can um, utilize the same audience for all of your ads, right? If you're going to set up multiple age ranges, um, you, can, you can test that way. Um, if you're going to test Canada and United States, you can use the same detailed targeting essentially to go out there and run 10 different ads to one product. And then you get to pick apart the data and figure out what... Uh, ad set because these are ad sets you guys what ad set is best converting for your shop okay and ultimately that's what split testing is all about so when we talk about test 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 this is how we're doing it you guys we're running multiple ads to one product so multiple ad sets inside of a campaign okay I'm gonna I know it sounds like I'm beating a dead horse but um, we've had a lot of questions about understanding power editor and understanding the ads manager and understanding ad sets and campaigns. So we've got one campaign for a goth dress. We're setting up, say, 10 different ad sets of different age groups, different locations, okay, towards our detailed targeting. And then you set up your ad, right? Your picture, your copy, all that stuff. Um, and you can split test all that stuff too. Like maybe the image, different images will convert differently. Um, different ad text, um, you know, as, as in copy is going to convert different. So you can test all of that stuff. And so that's, that's a, a great way to go. Now, again, setting up multiple ads like this, you guys can seem like a pain in the butt. And that's why um, I typically use like Adspresso or Quaya to go out there and do it. And I'll, uh, I'll put, I'll put a link in the description, you guys, for those programs, because I just, it saves me so much time, you guys. Again, you gotta you gotta put your time and focus into the things that are making you money, right? Setting up ads and testing is ultimately where you make your money. That's why 
we tell students all the time, like how to find these virtual assistants for, for low cost that can really take a, a lot of this work off your hands. So you can focus on what's important, right? This is, this is the important stuff right here. That's going to make your company money. So that's where you got to focus right now. Automatic placements, um, edit placements. So <clears throat> essentially when you're setting this stuff up, you guys, you can play around with this a lot. I always edit the placement because personally, um, when a, when an ad is brand new, when I'm setting stuff up, I typically go mobile only just initially you guys to collect the data. So again, part of scaling when, when you guys get into our scaling modules, you'll understand why we do it this way. Um, and ultimately we're collecting a ton of data on mobile because everyone's on their phones. Right. Um, and essentially, initially, I kind of get rid of like instant articles. Um, if, you're, if your Instagram is set up properly and you're running a, like a really cool image, then I would, I would even suggest testing Instagram with your image. Now, remember how important for Instagram, like imagery is super important, you guys, whether you're advertising on Facebook or Instagram. It's super, super important. So um, just make sure that the images that you're using really catch people's attention because again, that is, that's the key right now in marketing is how do you stop someone for two seconds to actually look and, and read about what it is that you're promoting audience network. You guys, I don't mess with it. Um, and messenger, I don't mess with it. And I'm just saying this for right now, if you're brand new, you're starting to promote ads. I want your ad spend to go the furthest possible. In fact, take off marketplace here too. I want your ad spend to go, and get you the data that you need as fast as possible. So uh, initially, I would always suggest test your ads in the United States. There's a lot of people that purchase massive consumers, a lot of money. Um, I think Canada is a great market. Uh, Australia, the UK, you know, these are all great markets. But initially, what you're doing is, is you're looking, you're really looking to find out who your buyer is. Because if your buyer, you guys, is say women 24 to 30 in the United States, um, and, and you can, you can start to really find what age group is attracted to that dress that you're going to be promoting. Um, then, you know, it doesn't matter where you take it. If you take it to Canada, if you take it to UK, you know, that there's going to be people just like those people that this, that this ad converts for. So initially you're just looking for that data, right? And then from there, once you get that, we can talk about getting into all these other things and which ones are more effective. So that's just the initial setup. Um, and understanding that. So the other thing is if you have a, a, a specific product, let's say you're doing a print on demand product. That's a, that's a cell phone case, right? You don't, you don't want your, you don't want your iPhone case to be going to Android people. So you can set up what mobile device that you actually want that ad to go to. So that, that's where you would do it right here under mobile devices. If you have an iPhone product, make sure your ads only delivering to iPhone people. Uh, you know, self-explanatory, but most people don't know that when they're first brand new into uh, Facebook. So there's a lot of really cool, cool ways to do that. And in fact, if you search up here under detailed targeting, you know, iPhone users, you can target people that have specific iPhones. Um, also, you can you can target um, income ranges. So a lot of people don't know that that. If you're, if you're promoting an expensive product, like a piece of furniture, um, you know, and you, you need to, uh, to market that to a specific income range, you have that ability inside of Facebook. So, um, <laughs> Facebook also knows if, if you're a brand new mother, so like, uh, you could have, um, there is a way new newborn. So there's actually a way to target um, mothers who have brand new newborn babies. And I'd have to dive into this. I don't promote baby products, you guys. I know that, the, that a lot of people do, but um, I personally kind of tend to stay away from, not stay away from kids' products, but young kids. Um, clothing's one thing, but there's also there's also a lot of rules, especially in the States, um, for promoting kids products. So you just, you just gotta be careful with that kind of stuff. Just make, make sure you do your research on it. Um, but there is a way to target, you know, brand new nine month old 
Let's try that. Yeah, here we go. So you can you can target um, you know kids three years old, two years old. Um, it, it, it's wild that Facebook has this information, but it it works, you guys. So if you, if that is your target, then you know go after it. Um, and make sure that you're getting more and more specific into your market because obviously the more specific that you can get, but you do want, you want to make sure your potential reach, you know, if, if your potential reach, you guys, is only 200,000, that adds, that ad may do well really shortly, but it's going to die really quick. So make sure that your potential reach, and remember, once an ad's created, you can always go back into that ad and add more people into, um, into those actual targeting. So you can add more of these things in to make this, this group grow larger once your ad is successful. So that is available to you. Um, as far as optimization, you guys, we already optimized for conversions. You can, uh, you can choose to optimize for both link clicks and conversions. But again, this isn't something I mess with. However, if you want to test it, you can definitely test it. Uh, the other thing for e-commerce is the one day click. You want to make sure to change this to one day click versus seven day. Uh, seven day just means that it's going to optimize for after that seven days of data. Um, we're, we're more dealing with impulse buyers. So seven day may be, you know, something more if like if you're promoting, I don't know, like a newsletter or some sort of, uh, you know, opt in page, your data, you might want to look at your data that way. But for e-commerce, uh, we're doing the one day click. Now bidding you guys, we're going to, we'll have to get into that into a, another video because honestly, we could talk about bidding all day long. However, uh, when you're brand new, um, I would stick to just automatic for right now. And that way you let Facebook actually go out there and do its job to where it's automatically looking for those conversions. Um, you don't want to, especially if you're brand new, um, dive into bidding because it's just going to you have a potential unless you really know what you're doing, you're going to lose a lot of money on bidding. So um, I'm, I'm not one to sit here and say that it doesn't work because I know bidding does work. Um, although, you know, my first 18 months in e-commerce that I was marketing on Facebook, you know, did, did almost $2 million in revenue over those. And I only ever used automatic. So I'm showing you guys basically the setup that, we used to do that. However, um, bidding, bidding does work, right? So I'm not going to sit here and say that it doesn't. I just think that if you're brand new and you're just learning Facebook marketing, stick to automatic, let Facebook do its job for you. And that's essentially it, you guys, for setting up the ad set. So you can click here and uh, review draft items. You know, so essentially you've got your new ad set here. If you have more ad sets, they're going to pop up right here as well. So... I don't, um, I would just uncheck that because this was one that, not one that we actually set up, but this one right here was the one that we just set up. So you just can confirm that, right? And now you've got an ad set inside of your campaign, right? So the next thing that you would do for it is you would actually set up your ad. All right. So then under ads for, you know, for your ad set, you can actually create your ad. And again, inside of power editor, you guys, it's, it may look a little bit different, but you can choose, um, you can choose your existing campaign. You can choose your ad set that you, that you then set up. So, um, you know, your women 24 to 30, you can even put, you know, gothic dress if you want to make sure that you title it and you can put USA. And then create new ad. So same thing, name your ad. Okay, and then inside, 
of the ad when you set it up <coughs> you got to pick your Facebook page okay and then right here is where you actually can set up an ad with an image or video ad with multiple images which is a carousel ad you can also do a collection ad um, if you're promoting multiple products from your store you guys carousel ads work really really well um, and the nice thing about the carousel ads is Facebook does optimize so if one if one particular image is getting clicked more than the other it actually will show that first uh, as it starts advertising so it does it does learn and get smarter with that uh, most of the time we're just doing an ad uh, image or video for video ads so essentially that would be what we're setting up and then you can do a, a full screen experience where basically it's going to add a mobile landing page that opens basically from your ad um, and you can do the mobile page stuff is, is pretty cool um, however again initially it's it's not necessary so the other thing is if you already have a post uh, set up on your Facebook page you can you can basically pull that in and utilize it already inside a, a power editor but the nice thing about Power Editor is you don't have to do that first. You can actually set it up inside a Power Editor. Um, you'd select your image. You know, you'd put your website URL to promote. Um, you can actually, here, I'll actually do this. So let's say... Let's say that we were promoting, you know, let's say that this was the black dress, okay? This is just a backpack um, idea that I used in an example during a training. But let's say that your, your website URL is jarlin, jarlinfashion.com forward slash uh, blue red backpack. So let's say that this was your URL for your product, okay? And so, essentially, it's going to say not found, which is fine, you guys, because, again, this is just a test site. But And then you would put in your text that you want for your ad. So, uh, get 50% off. So anything that goes in text, you guys, is your um, ad copy. So initially, when you're setting up a post on Facebook, you know, this is where your basically your status goes. So you can put, you know, get it here, and you can put your link to your product right here, you know, your Google URL shortener, just like we teach you, um, to actually put your the, the link to the product page right here in your description. Um, you can change this learn more button to shop now. Uh, let's see. There we go. Oops, wrong one. So you can have this shop now and essentially that's going to drive them to this link. So you can put the link in the description as well as, you know, putting it, putting the website URL here. So when they click on shop now or they click that link, um, they're going to actually find that product. Now, or you could just say in your ad text too, um, click, click the shop now button to get your discount. And then, you know, tag and share, tag and share with friends, however you want to set this up. So this becomes your ad copy. Um, this becomes your link, display link right here. As you guys can see, you're going to see this change. Um, <laughs> whoops. So your display link, you guys, is this URL right here. So you can change that as well. 
um, whatever whatever you actually want that to display. That's not a clickable link though, so you can change it to whatever.com that you want. Um, you've got your headline, 50% off. This week only, right? And that should change down here. So now you guys can see how this is starting to come together for this ad. Um, and this is this is also um, how it's going to look when you're on Instagram as well. So you can pay attention to that. Um, you can view it. You know what it's going to look like on a phone. Um, what it what it would look like on desktop. You know what it's going to look like on your Instagram feed. You'd have to choose your Instagram up here too, though, you guys. So uh, this particular account isn't connected to an Instagram account, but as long as your Instagram account is connected to your Facebook page, you just you click here, click your Instagram, and it's going to pull that up for you. So the next thing would be, um, let me go back to that feed. Okay, so you can see what it looks like, and then. You have the ability right here, you guys, for news feed, feed link description. Um, you can basically just give them, you know, a reason why they're coming to your site. You can change your shop now button. So you could say like, uh, I should I should have pulled up an image of a black dress since we've been talking about that the whole time. But I just just imagine that that's a black gothic dress, you guys. Um, and if you were to say like top. Uh, or best uh, best gothic women's apparel number one gothic women's apparel site you know so this is just another little little thing down here on the on the ad that you can add into it under your news feed so it gives you a lot of different uh, flexibility you guys on what you're actually what your ad actually looks like and from that point, you just click review draft items and you can run the ad. So hopefully this gives you guys a better understanding of Power Editor. Essentially, you know, it does it does give you guys a little bit more flexibility when it comes to setting stuff up. It's not much different, you guys, than the than the ads manager. So if you like the ads manager, go ahead and utilize it, but also understand that once you set up an ad in the ads manager, you can come into Power Editor. And you can add more ad sets into those campaigns. So I want you guys to understand both because you do have the ability to utilize both. But I also wanted to just cover what um, what the new Power Editor and Ads Manager look like so you guys can understand um, the familiarity of both sides of it. Because again, Facebook does update uh, the way that their actual look and feel of both of these goes. So this is Ads Manager, you guys. The only main difference is, um, again, you create ad here, and the one main difference is the initial page that it's gonna pull up, okay? So under Ads Manager, you've got your campaign, your ad set, and your ad. So again, Ads Manager just kind of walks you through the setup. Um, but as far as like, I wanted you guys to understand both. So again, your objective, it gives you all the objectives just like Power Editor. Um, again, we're going to choose conversions. And then it allows you to name your campaign. You can create split tests right here. Um, so again, it they, they operate the same, you guys. It's just Power Editor does give you a little bit more uh, flexibility in, in how you set things up, okay? Mm -hmm. So ultimately, that's it. I mean, I just wanted to cover that for you guys. I hope it. I hope that helps make more sense of both platforms, um, the Ads Manager and the Power Editor, um, so you understand that you have the av availability to use both. You don't necessarily have to. Um, if Ads Manager it seems more friendly to you, then go ahead and use it, you guys. But I wanted a lot of a lot of uh, questions were coming up about Power Editor because Facebook is definitely. Um, putting Power Editor out there in front of you more often now. So I want you guys to understand both sides of that. So hope that helps. And uh, again, this is Joshua Zitting, SixFigureEcomAcademy.com. For those of you watching this on YouTube, um, check out the links in our description. If you're uh, looking for, you know, starting an e-commerce business, that's what we do. So again, I will uh, see you guys next time. Take care.